I'm gonna give you my top 10 tips on growing a woodworking business from scratch that helped me achieve a dream. And I'm all about chasing dreams, so if you're after that dream, chase it with everything you got. I actually started in February of 2017 with a borrowed circuit saw and two borrowed drills. If you watch this channel, you know that story. That's the first tip, start with what you have. You don't need giant table saws and expensive routers and all that stuff just to get started. You can buy those things as you progress. My second tip is to have a business plan. Have in mind the type of projects you're gonna to wanna to build and what market you're gonna go after. In other words, pick a target audience. So if you want to target farmhouse furniture or if you wanna target outdoor furniture or cutting boards, charcuterie boards, pick something that you're gonna be known for in your local area. Mine was farmhouse furniture. I went all in on that, as you can see on the channel with several videos before this one about building farmhouse furniture. And that was what I was known for in this area. Once you dial in that, you'll get good at doing that. You'll be known in your area and even wider than your area if you're creating content that lets people know you're the go-to person for that type of project. With the farmhouse furniture, you can see my video top five woodworking projects that sell. Uh, those were my top five sellers. They were the best sellers that I had to that point. Those were extremely popular for me and it helped me build the business to where it is today. Build what you love. If you love doing something, you're gonna pour your heart and your soul into it and it's not gonna feel like work. It's gonna feel like you're getting to do something you love. Woodworking is that for a lot of us. I actually like coming out here, smelling that sawdust, firing up those tools. It's just fun to me, even though it's work. Running a business is actually extremely hard. It's not easy. If it was easy, everybody would do it. However, if you love doing it, you will push forward and grow the business. If you don't, you'll give up pretty quickly. Keep in mind that it's gonna take some time to actually build the business. You're running a marathon and not a sprint. Start small and work your way up. The main thing is to provide value to your customers. Give them a little extra than what they actually expected. That will actually translate into more orders because they're gonna tell their friends and family all about how great you were to work with and how you provided extra things. So if you're selling cutting boards, you can give them some cutting board conditioner so they can keep it conditioned. If you're selling farmhouse type furniture, maybe provide felt pads for the bottom so it doesn't scuff their floors. Just small things like that will actually add value and show that you care. Actually buy tools as you need them and not as you want them. We all want the big table saws and the miter saws and all that stuff, but sometimes you actually don't need that actual tool to complete the project. I've been guilty of this. I know most woodworkers are guilty of it because we want the latest and greatest. And while yes, I have them now, I went years without them. I highly recommend getting a 50% down payment deposits on commission work. So in other words, they're gonna pay you to build a project. Furniture, for example, an end table. You and the customer decide on the specs of the piece that you're going to build, and then you tell them the price. If it's $300, you would want to get $150 down payment. That locks them in. You can put them on your schedule and say, okay, I'll be able to get to it in X number of days. And that way they don't back out on you after you've started. I've had that happen before and I had to start taking deposits. It's really uh, disheartening when you do that. And friends can be <laughs> the worst offenders on that. So 50% deposit, doesn't matter if it's friends or family. It's also a great idea to keep a source of income. Don't just jump off in a full-time business without actually knowing that it's going to work. And that's the same thing we did with 731 is I kept my full-time job for four and a half years and done this on the side. While this required a ton of hours and a ton of time, it actually built into what you see today. So it's worth it in the end, but it's gonna take a lot of work, but just don't abandon everything to jump to a new thing without knowing or having some general idea that it's probably gonna work. Business license and LLCs. I get those questions all the time. People wanna know, do you have to have a business license to be in business as a woodworker or do you have to be an LLC? I'm not an attorney and I'm not a tax professional, so consult those for legal advice and tax advice. In Arkansas, you can operate as a sole proprietor. I'm not sure about your state. And as far as sales tax and charging tax on things, You'll need to check out your state's requirements. Each state may be different. As far as LLC goes, all those rules should be on your Secretary of State's website. 
Just search your state's name, Secretary of State, and then you'll find everything you need to know about LLCs there. As far as business licenses, some cities and counties do require you to have certain licenses to do certain businesses, so you would need to check with your local authority there. There's actually an attorney on YouTube called Hawthorne Law that I watch. He doesn't know me. I don't know him personally. I've just watched a lot of his videos on LLC, things like that. I'll put a link to his channel in the description. You can go check out some of his content, see if that helps you out on those legal type questions. So one of the main questions I get is, how do you find customers? How do you sell the product to a person? Well, my advice is to find one customer. Don't worry about trying to find 1,000 customers because that's too broad of a target. Find one. You're aiming to get one customer to start with. How do you get that one customer? A lot of people post on Facebook and different things trying to sell their items. That typically doesn't work now. When I started, it did. But the algorithms change and now you just don't get promoted so much on there when you're trying to sell something. Just ask people to buy what you're selling. If you believe in your product and know that it's a good product, then have confidence to say, hey, will you buy this? Hey, I offer this product. Kind of like this. This video is brought to you by 731woodworks.com. Go check out our online store. We have easy to follow build plans to help you make awesome projects. Take our farmhouse bundle, seven of our most popular build plans available in one bundle with a 20% discount already off the top. And if you use code business, you'll get 20% more off that already awesome bundle. Just like that. So I just told you to go buy that bundle. It is a good bundle. I believe it's a good bundle. I believe it's an awesome deal because a lot of people have taken those projects and started to build their business based on those projects. So for example, a lot of people who build cutting boards and charcuterie boards actually make deals or partnerships with real estate offices. How do they do that? They walk in and say, hey, my name is Matt and I make awesome, beautiful cutting boards. Check these out. Here's one as a gift for you. What I would love for us to do is talk about maybe forming a partnership where I provide you with the cutting boards, you buy them from me, and then you give them to your customers as a gift. Well, that will actually make the customer refer that real estate office uh, to other people who are looking to buy homes because they got an extra gift. And then you also in turn are making money because you're selling them cutting boards, maybe at a lower cost if you're selling them a lot. There's a lot of people actually doing that. Or if you make bird houses or boxes or any type thing like that where people are, could use those as a thank you gift, those are great ways to get in business and start making things. If you're making furniture and things like that, just talk to first your friends and family and let them know that you're selling these things because otherwise they may not know if they don't know you that well. And just ask people to start buying your thing. You just need one customer. Once you get that one customer, you all can work out a deal on the pricing structure. Don't price yourself too low. A lot of times when you start when woodworking, you want to price your products lower so that you can get that sale. That is a huge mistake because then you're known as the low cost option in town. You don't want to be that person because you can't make profits like that and you can't stay in business very long doing that. When you get that first customer, you're going to learn several things. You're going to learn how to communicate and you're going to learn how to work with someone on a custom build. What I always did was I would share pictures of the build along the way to let them know, hey, I'm working on your project. It helps that customer feel more involved in a custom project. And that's why they come to you. It's because they wanted a custom build. If they just wanted a generic build, they'd have bought it from a furniture store or even Walmart, Ikea, places like that. So it gives them more personal touch. And when you deliver that product and they love it so much, they're gonna tell their friends and their family. And that's how you get more customers. You tell them, hey, if you love this, please tell your friends and family about it. Don't be afraid to ask for that referral. If they love it, they will refer it over and over again. When somebody comes into their home, they're gonna look at that piece and be like, where did you get that? They're gonna refer you every single time. Starting out, that's how we built our business here locally in a small town is 99% of the business we got was word of mouth. If you are looking to sell online, Etsy's a good place to start, however, understand you're jumping in as a small fish into a giant pond. So starting out, you're probably not gonna get a whole lot of sales, uh, but it does pick up traction over time. I was able to actually generate about $20,000 in income a year just making stove covers from Etsy. Uh, I've got a video all about Etsy. I'll link that in the description below if you're interested in Etsy. And I actually think every business should have a website that you can refer people to, to be able to either buy things or to actually see some of your products and I'll be discussing that in a future video. So if you wanna see that, be sure to hit that subscribe button, bell icon, and click all so you get notified of all of our new content.
The greatest piece of business advice I can give you from someone who started from scratch and made it to this point is you can't be lazy. You just got to work. It may require you to get up at 4 a.m. It may require you to work extra at night. If you need to do that to grow the business and that's what your dream is, by all means, chase the dream with everything you've got because nobody else is going to do it for you. Nobody wants your dream. You want your dream. And the only way to catch it is to actually chase it. And by chase it, I mean sprint after it with every ounce of your being. Listen, it may not happen. You may trip and fall trying to catch it. That's okay. At least you tried, right? That's all we can do is try, but you really have to get off the couch. You have to get off from in front of the computer. You have to let that phone sit over there somewhere while you actually do the work. So stop watching this video, go to work. So how do you deal with the person who's always asking for a lower price? How do you respond to those people? I've got a video on that topic. Click that box right there. Clicking that box gets you the big old virtual fist pump. Also another one of my favorite videos right there.